is going everybody? My name is Zella Prince and welcome back to yet another SCP Foundation ex Explained video. Now today we're going to react to another video by the SCP Explained Story and Animation Channel. And this SCP is called SCP-1913 Deadly Monster Squad. The Furries. This is either going to go in an interesting way or a meta way with furries. I mean, I'm kind of a furry myself, but not full bodysuit like furries. I'm more like an anime, like, fur, kind of furry. Like, you, you guys have seen my um, Fox OC before. You get It's literally on the, whatchamacallit, of my uh, YouTube channel all the time. I actually used to use it in thumbnails for a time period because of the theme, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and react to this. SCP-1... 913. Three, two, one, go. The SCP Foundation employs hundreds of different procedures in the containment of the many, many anomalies held in their walls. Yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ, this guy's a big budget. steel boxes to ordinary observation rooms, it is extremely common for the entities in containment to attempt an escape. And the Foundation has measures in place to protect against these breaches and the damage that they can cause. However, there was one SCP in containment that presented an abnormally constant hazard. It wasn't the entity in captivity, though, that created the danger. No, it was the constant threat from two additional creatures that were intent on getting to the captured entity and removing it from the Foundation's grasp. And they Wait, so these two other entities want to free one other one that's already under it, the SCP Foundation's care? Okay. They were willing to destroy anything that got in their way. This is the rather unique problem with SCP-1913, which refers not to a single entity, but to three. One three instances. And two that would stop at nothing Whoa. to get to it. This is the story of SCP-1913. The strange team made up of Agatha, Telly, and Freddy, better known as the Furies. Fury, SCP oh, Furies, not Fury. Furry, my bad. <laughs> Forget what I said in the beginning of the video. Forget what I said. Team consists of three separate entities, referred to as SCP-1913-1, SCP-1913-2, and SCP-1913-3. After the initial discovery of SCP-1913 and its containment at an SCP Foundation site, the site was attacked by SCP-1913-2 and SCP-1913-3. It seemed to be an attempted jailbreak of sorts, with 2 and 3 determined to free 1 from captivity at all costs. After this initial attack, the three entities were classified together as SCP-1913, and their behaviors and fate- So, are SCP-1913-2 and 1913-3 in containment, or are they still trying to break out SCP-1913-1? ...were undoubtedly intertwined. Whenever I mean, it's like a connected hive mind between the three. That's what, I, that's what it seems like to me. SCP-1913-1 was taken. The other two would follow. As part of SCP-1913's containment procedures, Convoy Omega-8, also known as the Cats in the Cradle, was formed. This team, run by a team of scientists that included the young and woefully inexperienced Dr. Hayward, was tasked with handling the containment, research, and movement of SCP-1913-1, as well as managing the inevitable attacks by the other two entities. SCP-1913-1 is a ceramic statue of a cat, 20.5 centimeters in height. It has the name Agatha written on the bottom, resulting in the entity often being referred to by that name. It is painted white- I mean, it has a name, so you might as well just call it by it instead of the designation. But did he, wait, he, no, he said the other two have other names, the other two en entities, so Toes, let me just ears, continue. ears, and forehead, and has a I'm black ink-like pigment around oh, its not eyes, even there anymore. mouth, and paws. It has displayed sentience and is capable of speaking. Yeah, like I said, said it has an intelligent hive mind, so the other two can come and find it and try and break it out. It's literally like what I just said. When Agatha talks, it has the voice of a young woman, though the statue's mouth does not move <clears> when it speaks. Agatha is not friendly toward the Foundation staff, but oh. will answer questions when its container is shaken. Though Agatha cannot move on its own, it should be treated with extreme caution and only touch when absolutely necessary. This is Why, does it have like a corrosive effect? The nature of the ink on its eyes, mouth, and paws. If it comes into contact with the skin of a living thing, the ink will soak into its pores. 
The area touched by the ink will begin to dissolve and disappear until the entire body has been dissolved. So it has a corrosive effect. I was right. Horrifyingly, the affected individual does not die until their entire body has dissolved, even if they have lost vital organs. Arms and legs left after the head and torso have dissolved will continue to move on their own, moving around and grabbing at objects. Oh, the effects weird. of the ink can be stopped if it is washed off on the skin before any dissolution can take place though this will often still leave scars. SC I mean, it's better to have scars than to lose your entire body, right? P1913-2 is a humanoid skeleton covered with dark hair and ash that has the shape of a human female, but with a canine-looking skull, fingers, and toes. It is unnaturally fast, capable of reaching speeds up to 65 kilometers per hour, despite lacking any visible kilometers. muscle tissue. Unlike SCP-1913-1, the skeleton does not display any sentience or capability for speech. It seems to act on orders given by the other two entities, and attacks anyone wearing a lab coat or the standard armor worn by members of the cats in the cradle. It will attack if provoked, and will use its claws to rake at the victim. No matter how much damage it does, SCP-1913-2 is incapable of killing its victims, and they continue to live and suffer until killed by another external force. SCP so it won't kill, but it will just leave them on the verge of death, basically. Okay. SCP-1913-3 has previously referred to this entity as Telly. And that Telly. nickname now appears in official Foundation documentation. Okay, so we got well. Agatha the and Telly. The final member of What's this bizarre trio is SCP-1913-3, which refers to itself as Freddy. Freddy. Freddy is a creature that shares the appearance of an adolescent male black Labrador retriever, with one notable difference. It does not have a mouth, a nose, or eyes. Instead, its face is made up of an array of holes in the shape of a terrifying grin emitting a white light. Like a Freddy is intelligent and capable of communication, though it refuses to explain its pursuit of Agatha. When asked about the subject, its only response is that this is a family matter. When Freddy attacks something, it produces a burst of gray flames from its face holes. Ooh. These flames have been measured reaching temperatures up to 1200 degrees Celsius. These what? flames burn non-living objects in a relatively normal way. But when the fire comes in contact with a living thing, the flames continue to burn until the subject's skin has been entirely burnt away, or until the flame has been deliberately extinguished. Freddy has caused severe burns to Foundation personnel, often resulting in loss of sight, hearing, and touch. Through unknown means, though likely because of a psychic connection of some kind, Freddy is able to know the location of Telly and Agatha at any given time. Is it bad that I thought Freddy was the other SCP called Man's Best Friend? I don't actually know anything about that SCP, so I'm gonna I'm looking to I gotta write a note no, no to look up Man's Best Friend. Man's Best Friend SCP. I have a I have a step pack of sticky notes on my desk. It wasn't even in frame. There it is. So I just, I just have like sticky notes li literally riddled all over my desk all the time. Now that you know the members okay, of so SCP-1913 right, so and exactly what they are capable of, it is time to get into the events of Encounter <laughs> 029. Most of what we know about the event comes from the testimony of Agent Crowley, who was present for the ordeal. He related the events to Dr. Toki in Interview 1913-A, providing a glimpse into what exactly happened. According to Agent Crowley, it was a mistake for Dr. Hayward to be appointed to a position in the Cats in the Cradle. He was too new to the work, too green, and something was bound to go wrong. Crowley oh, insists that new. Hayward okay. should have been assigned to I a didn't safer catch group that first earlier. in order to build experience and that what happened to him was not his fault. The cats in the cradle were transporting Agatha to a new location when they realized they were running low on food and fuel. They made a stop at Site 45-A in order to refresh their stores. It wasn't supposed to take very long, only a few minutes. After all, they had made supply runs many times before and had it so down made to them a stall? science at this point. It had been days since they had seen Freddy or Telly, however, and the staff was feeling very jumpy. It was too quiet, and after a few days of peace, 
they had a terrible feeling that something big was coming. As Hayward and Crowley drove into Site-45's garage, a fireball suddenly erupted behind them. A car had exploded. When the dust cleared, there was Freddy and Telly, the faceless dog, and the skeleton. Crowley alerted Site-45, calling the security team and ordering them to evacuate the facility of all personnel immediately. Crowley grabbed Hayward and attempted to make it to the roof where they could evacuate with the rest of the personnel. But before they could make it there, they were intercepted by SCPs 1913-2 and 3. The two men ran into a laboratory and locked the doors behind them, as Freddy and Telly attempted to follow. Telly began to scratch at the door with its claws, but when that didn't work, Freddy ordered Telly to step out of the way. Using its flames, Freddy blew the door off its hinges, triggering the building's sprinkler system. Through the steam and smoke, Freddy casually walked into the room. It didn't attack, nor did it order Telly to attack. It simply made its way over to Crowley and sat in front of him. Crowley asked why it was here, why it was doing this. Freddy simply responded that it was doing this as a service, and that a its service. flame was redemption. In a moment of panic, Dr. Hayward threw a microscope at Freddy. This foolish move only provoked the entity, and it threw Hayward into the counter with a burst of flames. Though Hayward was burned, the water from the sprinkler system prevented him from burning as badly as he could have been. But then, Freddy ordered Telly to kill Hayward for his impudence. Telly picked up Hayward and threw him into I the far wall of the laboratory, where he crashed into a shelf full of jars. The jars broke open, covering Hayward with their contents, rocks of sulfur. Telly prepared to charge at Hayward, but suddenly, it stopped. Telly and Freddy both stopped their attack on Hayward, regarding the rocks that covered him with suspicion, even fear. Crowley quickly put two and two together and realized that, for some reason, these two creatures had an intense aversion to sulfur. Gathering more sulfur from the broken jars, he began pelting the two with pieces of the rotten-smelling oh, mineral. Crowley was able like to successfully it. drive Freddy and Telly out of the laboratory and into an area where they could be finally contained once and for all. Oh, the, Crowley then they rushed Hayward to the infirmary, where the third-degree burns and a cauterized hole in his chest would need to be immediately treated. Though gravely injured, he would eventually recover from his physical wounds. His psychological wounds were a different story, though. Was As he Agent broken? Crowley said, I lived to see those things tear out Hayward's heart, and so did he. Currently, all three entities that make up SCP-1913 are in containment at SCP Foundation facilities. Each entity must be contained at least 1,600 kilometers away from the others. Each creature is placed in the middle of a glass ring with a radius of 4 meters, and the inside of each oh, glass ring is I was about to say, it's going to be made of sulfur. Dust. This prevents the entities from reaching <clears throat> each other, and has so far seemed to prevent Freddy from psychically determining the location of the other two. Anyone handling SCP-1913-1 or Agatha must wear latex gloves and avoid any kind of skin contact at all times. If skin contact is made for any reason, the affected individual must immediately wash their hands to remove the ink from their skin. If the ink cannot be removed, the infected staff member must be terminated. Any staff entering the room of SCP-1913-2 must remove their lab coats and armor in order to avoid provoking it. SCP-1913-3 okay. is in a blast and fireproof cell. No one is permitted to enter its containment facility. It is not known for sure what will happen if the three aspects of SCP-1913 are ever allowed to reunite. Some have posited that it will result in the creation of a fourth entity. Some believe that Agatha will change shape or transform somehow. Some believe that something entirely different, unpredictable, and deadly will happen, putting all human life at risk. We can only hope that we never have to find out for sure. Now go watch SCP-3001. What is 19? Hold on. What? Oh, he didn't say what 19. What classification 1913 was? So I'm just gonna look it up. SCP-1913 classification. Here we go. Classification. It. Oh, so what was it? It was reclassified as Euclid. So what was it before? What was it? Was it Keter? Uh, okay, I won't look into too, too much of this later, right now, so I'll look at it later. 
But I hope you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, because this one was definitely new to me. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the next few reactions I do. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, guys. And I will see you in the next reaction video. Bye.